I envision my classroom to be a culturally responsive environment where all students are accepted and have the opportunity to learn regardless of culture, gender, or ability. My students will know that I understand them and care about them uh, individually, socially, and academically. Establishing these relationships is important to know my students because it helps plan instruction and it helps you to be adaptive to meet all the needs of all the students in your classroom. Literacy is not limited to ELA. Literacy encompasses all modes of learning in every content area. Literacy is how we interact with and construct meaning from, meaning from visual, oral, and written language in order to be successful citizens. In my current classroom, ELA, math, science, and social studies are taught separately, and ELA is allotted the, the greatest amount of time, followed by math, and then science and social studies are taught one week on, one week off, and are only allocated 30 minutes. In the future, I would like my content area to be incorporated with my ELA time. I think it would be a much better use of time where, like the book said, you could incorporate the nonfiction texts into the ELA learning, those naturally lend themselves to higher order thinking, problem solving, um, building a background, and they're harder. And, not, and when I reflect back on my class last year, I was trying so hard to teach them informational texts and that science and social st studies learning, and it's so hard for them. And I know why, because we only spend 30 minutes on it, where instead of covering a little bit, we could incorporate that into the ELA block, cover more in depth, they could get a better understanding of the content and learn those important processes in order to be able to solve problems, think critically. Um, I would do that by scaffolding learning in the classroom, showing them how to do it, teaching explicitly with a gradual release of responsibility, and then giving them authentic practice tasks that were hard, that challenged them, and then build up to an inquiry-based model. I love the 5E science model because you engage the students, you explore, explain. They would have a chance to to do it authentically where they can do something that they're interested in and work through all those steps because that's the skills that they're going to need when they go out and get jobs. We want them to be innovative and to be able to um, think creatively. They also have to be able to be uh, problem solve. They need to be able to work collaboratively with others and to communicate. So I kind of envision my classroom changing for sure. Instead of being up there lecturing the whole time, it will definitely be more of a combination and integrated content into ELA and more uh, explicit teaching, scaffolding, which I really already do, but I really like to get those supports in place to build to the inquiry-based model. The other thing that um, the book talked about was the integration of technology, and I love how they called us older people immigrants and the kids natives, but the point being there's a lot of teaching that needs to go in there as well because kids may know how to use this stuff, but they need a lot of ex uh, teaching explicitly how to read and think critically and analyze. I think there's a whole lot of opportunity that we haven't really gotten to yet that we that we could incorporate in the classroom. And I envision myself doing that, but I don't primarily teach computer. The kids go to a computer class. So I was thinking about making some suggestions, and if not, then incorporating some of those tools because I think kids are certainly, I teach second grade, and can certainly learn um, how a book is read um, in person different than a one online. So I thought that was some really good points as well. I look forward to talking with you guys again soon. Bye.